Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, we're glad that you, you chose to join us this morning. Um, <laughs> and uh, if Carl's in here, don't worry, I'm not preaching. I'm just uh, doing the intro. Um, so I'm going to kick us off with uh, our prayer time. Um, if, you, uh, if you're a guest, we're glad you're here. But if you're regular here, uh, typically we like to have every service uh, we like to start before the message with a prayer time, but we're going to start the service with a prayer time this morning. Um, and one thing that I just want to invite you to pray for uh, this morning is just that, uh, just thank God for everything. Um, I think often, even as we uh, start our prayer time, our prayers are asking for something, and those are all really good things, but this morning, just in light of, of Christmas, of God sending Jesus for us, uh, I would like us just to just to th- spend a moment just thanking God for everything that He's given to us and in our lives, as well as Jesus. Um, because, uh, not because He sent Jesus just so that we could be saved, but because we were created for Eden, right? Adam and Eve, we were created for Eden. And whenever sin happened, we were separated, and we were supposed to spend time with God, right? To walk in the brisk of the day with Him. And so, by sending Jesus, it's not just so that we can escape death, but it's so that we can spend time with Him, that we can be with God, our Lord. So I just want us to spend time just thanking Him. Uh, for Maybe you want to thank Him for all the gifts you got or are going to get. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to thank Him for your family or that you can only have two hours with your family this year as opposed to three. I don't, I don't know what you want to thank him for, but uh, I'm going to give you all just a few moments on your own just to silently pray and just thank God for everything that he's given you, and then I'll close this out in prayer so we can start worship. So you can go ahead and pray. God, I want to thank you for everything that you've blessed uh, blessed us with. God, I want to thank you for everything that you've blessed me with, uh, with my friends, my family, this life. Uh, and I want to thank you uh, for everything that you've blessed collectively, all of us, uh, on behalf of everyone here. And God, I want to thank you for everything that you've blessed this church with, um, continuously being faithful here and present in our lives. Um, God, I want to thank you for for Christmas, uh, for for sending your son as as the promise that you that was all through the Old Testament, uh, <laughs> that you were faithful that entire time up to this moment because you desired us that much, that you loved each one of us that much, that you would do anything for us, and that you sent your son for us so that we can be with you and that you're crying out to us through your word just for us to spend time with you. So God, I just ask... That, that, we, that we recognize that, that we thank you for everything you've given us, and through those things that we just slow down for a moment this Christmas, that we slow down just a moment just to remember you, uh, who you are, your presence in our lives, and that you sent your son just for us so that we can be with you, that we can spend time with you. So God, just uh, thank you for everything you've done. Uh, and God, just ask that, that whatever it is that you're wanting to say to us through this service, uh, if it is that or if it's something personal, I just ask that, that we slow down and listen enough this morning so that we can leave this place changed and, and love our families well uh, this Christmas. Uh, God, thank you for everything. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with us this morning. Everybody get a little excited. We get to worship our God this morning. So let's sing out and worship him.
Matthew chapter 1, starting in verse 8. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, he was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. He will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. Turning to Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 1. It says, Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. Everyone was on his way to register for the census to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, of this house or of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him with a child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. I'm going to let somebody else share this next part. They have about 50 more years of experience than I do, so I think they're just a little bit more qualified. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Just a bit better. Um, picking back up in verse 15, it said, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told, told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, <clears throat> pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just had been, had been told to them. Stable this is for
be seated this morning. Uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 through 12, uh, goes like this. It says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. 
And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. You see, uh, these, these men that came often... Uh, m many of you probably already have, have realized this, but it wasn't just three wise men, and, and they didn't come to the actual birth of Jesus. They ended up getting there somewhere around two years later. So these wise men saw the star in the east and traveled to see Jesus. And you might wonder, why in the world would they want to follow a random star, and who are these men, and why are they coming to see Jesus they're not Israelites. They're actually, uh, they're called wise men or magi, uh, and they're, they're from the east. And when the Bible talks about the east, generally it means Babylon. So these, these men have come uh, from a foreign country who doesn't worship Yahweh, who doesn't worship God, in order to worship the, the Son of God, Jesus. The reason... There's a long story. I won't get into a lot of it. But, but the reason that they came, they had, heard about, they had heard about a king being born long ago. Somewhere around 600 B.C., uh, Daniel became the leader of the Magi in Babylon. Like, think about, think about the, the intricate way in which God has woven the story of the birth of his son together throughout all of history. 600 years earlier, Daniel was put in charge of the Magi, who their tradition, uh, their tradition continued all the way to the birth of Jesus. And they came from the east two years after Jesus was born to give him gifts and to worship him. Now, these men were not just some random, ordinary men. They held power. They held authority uh, in Babylon. They held enough authority to actually give authority to a king. And so when they come over and Herod is afraid, there's a reason he's afraid. It's because they are his enemy. Babylon is. And, this, and it's not just three. Most likely hundreds of men are traveling together to see the birth of a king of the Jews and Herod thought he was the king of the Jews. And so he's afraid that he's about to lose all of his power. I wonder how many times in our own lives we are afraid to lose our own will and our own power to God. And we take it right back all the time. We take it right back all the time. This is what Herod wants to do. He wants to keep his power. He doesn't want to give it up. And yet these wise men from the east, these magi from the east, when they see Jesus, when they even hear about him, they're filled with joy. And then when they see Jesus, these powerful, wealthy men see Jesus, they bow down, they fell down and worship him. All of history, all of your life and all of my life, it centers on Jesus. Even if you don't know it, even if you don't believe it, even if you're not there yet, it doesn't change the reality that everything about you and everything about me centers around Jesus. That's what this season is about. And when they gave him their gifts, the gold, the frankincense, and myrrh, it had meaning. Gold representing deity. 
Frankincense representing a prophet or a, a priest and a king, and myrrh representing his death. All of this story is so intricately woven throughout the scriptures. It, it's a miracle. The scriptures you hold in your hand are miraculous. You might not realize that. And, and maybe it's because you don't read it. Maybe it's because you don't really know it. Maybe it's because you don't listen when it's taught. Or maybe you do. Maybe you realize that the Bible actually is miraculous. Maybe you realize it and you do love it and you do read it. And that, that is going to be the reason that in these moments, December 24th, December 25th, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, it gives you so much more satisfaction the more you understand who he is and the more important he becomes to you and the more central he becomes to your life because he's the center of this entire story. Those men that came with power and authority, they didn't just hand over authority to Jesus. They fell down on their faces and worshiped the king of the universe. And he can't, it's just amazing to me. They came from Iraq. That's where, that's where that is. Modern day Iraq to worship Jesus. I don't know what you guys know about Iraq, but I don't see many of them coming to worship Jesus. Well, in that moment, God sent his son and they had to see him. They had to know him. They had to worship him. I hope that this morning and that tomorrow, that that is your, that is your leaning as well, that you're being drawn in to worship the God that loves you more than you could ever imagine, and recognizing that he is central to your life. He's not just central to Christmas. He's central to your life. How much do you want that? as we sing again and worship Emmanuel God with us Before you set the edge of time foundations of the earth and sky you saw
Then they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided up his garments among themselves, casting lots for them to decide what each man should take. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It was the third hour when they crucified him. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It was written, Jesus the Nazarene, the king of the Jews. Therefore, many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews were saying to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Those passing by were hurling abuse at him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes, were mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let this Christ, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross so that we may see and believe. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuse at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal answered and rebuking him said, Do you not even fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we are indeed suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he continued saying, Jesus Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you shall be with me in paradise. When the sixth hour came, darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they began saying, Behold, he is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and taking a sponge, he filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave him a drink. But the rest of them said, Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who was standing right in front of him, saw the way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Good morning. Oh, there you sit right there. Yeah. Uh, man, what better way to celebrate the birth of Jesus than through baptism with someone that 
recognize, you know, their need for a Savior. So uh, this is James Weston. Uh, he's been coming with his family for a while now. Uh, and not this previous VBS, but the year before, uh, he, he was saved, uh, VBS, and uh, through talking with his parents and talking with Andy, he just realized that he wanted to be baptized so that everyone else would know the commitment that he made. Um, so James, when you die, do you know that you're going to go to heaven with Jesus? Yes. All right. Amazing. Well, it's on that profession of faith and uh, the authority of this church and God that I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. There you go. What a way to celebrate Christmas. I am so glad you are all here today uh, watching and looking. We see that next year we're going to have to double up. Uh, We've just felt like bringing everybody together was a great thing. But man, if you guys keep on bringing people, we'll do it twice and we'll make room for more people. Amen. Yeah, we'll just make sure that we are ready as God brings people into this place to hear more about him. Man, can you believe Christmas is tomorrow morning? Parents, are y'all ready? Everybody ready, parents? Kids, are y'all ready for tomorrow morning to get in there and tear into those gifts? Just unwrapping them. I was at one house this week, and there were three gifts under the tree. Uh, They have three kids, and it it was for the kids, but it wasn't from the parents yet. And so those kids are probably going, is Christmas happening this year? What's going on? If you would have looked underneath our tree last week, it would have been like, is Christmas happening this year? One of the things that happens is that if we're not careful, Christmas can become all about the gift giving. And you know what? If we're honest, that's really what it's all about. Now, don't preach back at me yet. Hold on and listen as I get into this. But can you remember as kids, and we've got a lot of kids in the room, you couldn't think about much else besides getting to Christmas Day and opening up those gifts and seeing what... I mean, you might have thought about Christmas parties. You might have thought about a Christmas play. But most of it was all about Christmas morning. And and some of y'all have already had to experience two and three... Uh, Christmas opening of gifts, but most of it is what mom and dad got us under the tree. I remember, uh, you may have heard me share before about my most memorable Christmas. I I was in elementary school. I can't remember exactly what age. I wish my mom was here so I could ask her uh, what year it was. But that year I was a genius, just so you know. Not all years, but that year I was a genius. And as I began, I'm I'm the youngest of four siblings. As I began to buy for my siblings, I didn't really think about what they would want. I thought about what I would want, and I bought accordingly. I bought my sister some kind of game that I would dig. I bought my brother, I think I bought my brother that year some baseball cards. He didn't collect baseball cards. I can't remember what I bought my other sister. And so I don't know how I got away with it. I don't know where my parents were when I was buying this stuff, but I wrapped it up. Christmas morning came and they began to open up their gifts. And the master plan worked, or it seemed to have worked. Because as they unwrapped it, it was like, thank you, Andy. I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. Well, I'll take it. (laughs) And so I just doubled up on some gifts. I thought my parents got a hold of me afterwards and we had to return those gifts and get something that my siblings would have really liked. And so it didn't turn out quite a lot, but, but it was all about gifts. As parents, don't you get caught up in the midst of the, the season and, and you're trying to buy your kids the gifts that they would want? And a lot of times I would go nuts and buy gifts that weren't on their list just because I would think that they want. Maybe I'm still that way. Maybe I'm still buying them stuff that I really want, but I put it under the tree hoping that maybe they'll give it back to me. But, but we get caught up, even as parents, with all of the gift giving. And if we're not careful, it can all become about gifts unless we stop and remember the greatest gift you have ever been offered. 
John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave us a gift. That gift was his only son. And whoever believes in his son would not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift... I mean, he keeps on coming back around and telling us about this gift. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, uh, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is what? It is a a gift from God. And so Christmas is all about a gift. But it's all about one you receive and not necessarily about one that you give. As we've sung this morning, as we've talked about it, you've heard that it was, it is, and it has always been about this gift. And this gift wasn't just seen in the manger. This gift was paid for on the cross. As we've been trekking through the book of Mark, and, and I've been watching as God's been barreling us down into this Sunday in the book of Mark and where we would be in the story This thought came to mind um, and just kind of rung through over and over again. The cross counts for nothing if Jesus were not perfect from his conception all the way to the cross. Catch that. Catch that this morning. I know we've got other things to do. We're going to get out of here pretty soon. And you've got festivities. You've got other houses to go to. You've got other things to get ready for, for the morning. But this needs to be in your heart. The cross counts for nothing if Jesus didn't fulfill all prophecy, if Jesus didn't hold to God, his Father, if Jesus was not perfect, not just from his birth, but from conception, the virgin birth all the way to the cross. And so for just a moment this morning, we're going to dig into Mark one more time. We've been in the book of Mark uh, throughout this year. We're going to land there again this morning. Mark chapter 1, we're just going to look at a couple of verses there and we're going to unpack from that. In the book of Mark, you don't see like in the gospel of Matthew and the gospel of Luke, you don't start off in chapter 1 with the story of Jesus's birth. I don't know what's wrong with Mark. You can ask him when you get to heaven, hey, why didn't you talk about the birth? Isn't that what it's all about? He, he doesn't even go like John does to talk about Jesus who was in the beginning with God, was with God, and was in fact God. But Mark starts off with, with his ministry already. And you get to Mark chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 and it says, Now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. And believe in the gospel. If you catch nothing else this year at Christmas, I hope you will catch this. Jesus came to make sure you did not miss out on the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ of who he is and what he came to do. So what is the gospel? He says, repent and believe the gospel. If I'm going to believe the gospel, I need to know what the gospel is. Well, the gospel begins at creation. The gospel begins with God created the heavens and the earth, but then you get down day six and he created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female, both. He created us, and he created us for a relationship with him. He wanted us to know him and to walk in relationship with him. The gospel starts right there. God created you. He loves you. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. The gospel story carries on to the fall of man. You get over to Genesis chapter 3. We're not very far even into the Bible. And we already see that we decided either God wasn't trustworthy or God wasn't enough. I don't know which one you are landing on this year. But a lot of times we land on is God trustworthy or is God enough? And Adam and Eve decided God wasn't enough. He, they needed something else. And maybe he wasn't trustworthy. Maybe he was holding something out. And so they disobeyed God and sin entered the world. The gospel is so clearly seeing the need for it in the fall of man. You, 
pass through the Old Testament and you get to the New Testament and the gospel continues with the virgin birth of Jesus. We'll talk just a minute more about that in just a second, but the virgin birth of Jesus, without that, there is no gospel in Jesus. It goes from the virgin birth through his perfect life and the gospel is fulfilled in the death, crucifixion, and resurrection of Jesus. He died for your sins. He took your place. The crucifixion that we just read about, that, that we show from cradle to the cross on the stage, it was for you. He endured all of that for you and for me. And then the resurrection is God declaring that he has all authority and all power over death, grave, sin, and everything else that would hold us back from him. So the gospel, the gospel, creation, to the fall of man, to the Savior being born who lived a perfect life so he could die in our place, the gospel is given so you and I can know God. It's proof that he loves us. It's proof that he created us, that he's for you, not against you. And even though we have sinned, he has come to redeem us. The gospel, the gospel is the gift this year that God wants to offer you. But I just want to know, I mean, we're going to receive a lot of gifts. We're going to be with different family, different extended family, and we're going to open up a lot of gifts. But have you accepted this gift from God? John 1 verse 12 says this. It says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. To as many as received him, have you accepted and have you received the gift God has for you? See, this morning we've sung about the birth, the death, the resurrection. We've read about, heard about that in scripture, but, but it's not enough just to hear about it, just to sing about it. You've got to take it in. So let me just walk through it one more time from the birth with you. His birth had to be miraculous. John already mentioned this. this. It's miraculous what we hold in our hand, the story of God given to us. The birth had to be miraculous. It had to be virgin birth. And I won't go into all of that this morning, but the man was out of the picture because the sin seed came through the man. And so God overshadowed Mary through the Holy Spirit, and what was conceived in her was from God, the Son, Jesus Christ. It had to be miraculous. Isaiah prophesied about this 700 years before. It says in Isaiah 7 verse 14, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son and she will call his name Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. 700 years before it happened, Isaiah had a vision from God and prophesied this would come about. And so when Mary's telling people they should have paid attention. This was miraculous. And from the time of the miracle of his birth, he, in order to die for you and me, had to live a sinless life. Last week, we looked about while he was on trial that they were accusing him of so many things, but nothing stuck. The, the Bible says they could find no fault in him. He was perfect. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one, Jesus, who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. A lot of people get hung up right there. They cannot believe somebody could come down to this earth, live like we live, go through the things we go through, be tempted like we are, and not sin. And I was sharing with somebody this last week, can you imagine just for a moment that you've already experienced heaven? You've already experienced what it's like to be in his presence, God's throne. You've seen it all. And then to come down here to all of these menial things, <laughs> these lesser things, and to subside to any of those, man, Jesus knew better. 
Of course he came. And knowing what heaven was and what he was redeeming for all of us came and was able to endure the temptations without any sin. And because he was perfect, sinless, he then could become the perfect sacrifice to pay for your sins. And to pay for my sins. First John 4 verse 10 says, This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. This Christmas, hear this loud and clear. God loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how bad you've been. God loves you so much that he sent his son to take your place, to die for your sins, because your sins, they had to be punished. And so Jesus came and took the punishment for you. And now if you will receive the gift that God gave through the death of his son on the cross, you can have eternal life. Again, the cross counts for nothing. If Jesus were not perfect from conception all the way to the cross, he was, he is, and he will always be. Therefore, he is your substitute. He is the one who took your place. He died for you. So, man, let's celebrate the baby Jesus with everything we've got. Christmas. Christmas stands for the celebration of Christ. Let's celebrate him with all we've got. But let's remember in the midst of this baby in the manger that he would grow up and endure such things on your behalf and my behalf and die in our place to take our sins. That's the gospel. And that is the gift we should really be celebrating. Too many people have gone Christmas after Christmas after Christmas with this gift right in front of them, and they never open it. I'm just asking you this morning, will you take another look? Will you consider again Jesus, the fullness of his life, not just his birth? I'm asking you again this year, will you consider Jesus, what he did for you? Would you acknowledge that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, and would you call on his name? Jesus said, Mark chapter 1, verse 15, repent and believe the gospel, and you will have eternal life. Uh, I got a Christmas card in this year. You've got many of them in, too. This one kind of caught my attention on the front cover. It just talked about God's gift. It had this poem on the front, little baby on the hay. Soon there'll be another day when nails shall pierce your hands and feet as you provide our sins defeat. Risen Jesus on the throne, we lift our praise to you alone, for you're the gift that we receive the moment that our hearts believe. I'm going to ask the team to come back up, and we're going to celebrate out of this place with one more song this morning. But we also want to offer you the opportunity, if you have never trusted in Jesus Christ, if you have never received the gift that he purchased for you on the cross. If you do not know without a doubt that when this life is over, you will go to heaven. Man, don't walk out of this room this morning. Let's talk to God about it. I would love to share with you how you can start a personal relationship with Jesus. I would love to tell you about what he did specifically for you. We have others in this room that would love to share the good news, the gospel with you personally, one-on-one. So as we stand and sing in just a minute, as others are singing, maybe you need to come and just say, hey, I need to accept the gift this morning. Before you go worrying about any other gift, let's do business with this one. And let's decide if we're going to open it up this year and receive what God's given us. Heavenly Father, Thank you. Thank you for bringing us together this morning. Thank you for letting us be with brothers and sisters in Christ. God, thank you for the lost in the room, those that have not trusted you yet, but they're here. God, I pray that they would lean in even more and understand that you've given them, offered them a gift. God, I so hope that they will open the gift today. So as we respond, God, stir us up in this room. Help us to know if we know you, and if we don't, God, draw us to yourself. Convict us. Oh, 
oh God, don't let us leave without you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing together.
that bridge again. We're going to sing about his, his name. He is a wonderful counselor. He's everlasting father. Prince of peace and mighty God. Let's just sing that together again this morning as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Let us adore him. Got your money's worth today. We said an hour, we gave you a little bit more. <laughs> Nobody ever complains about that anywhere else besides church, so don't complain today about it, okay? Hey, from Lori and I, our family, from John and Jessica, their family, from Cole, uh, from Lisa, Ron, their family, Valerie and Chris, their family, Ken, Lori, their family, we want to say Merry Christmas to y'all. We hope that the rest of this day, tomorrow morning, you celebrate big with your family and you continue to declare who Jesus is. If you're in this room and you do not have that personal relationship with him, we're going to stick around for a while. We would love to share with you how you can make things right with him. Uh, if you haven't been here on one of the Sundays that we've given out one of these ornaments, man, they're, they're one per family. We've got one with your name on it. Well, not it doesn't have your name on it. But they're up here in this box. If you would like one of those to add to your ornaments on your tree, by all means, grab those. And then just one thing, church family, to share with you last week, we took up Gift for the Savior. Uh, we had this goal that the finance team set of $70,000. And man, I was just thinking, you know what? We go big around here. And I just, sometimes I wonder. I don't know why I ever wonder because God faithfully brought together $70,032.96 last week. Amen. Above and beyond tithes and offerings. Now, if you weren't here last week or you weren't ready to give your gift for your Savior, give it. It was your gift. This is collective. Continue to bring yours, and let's see what God wants to do in this place as we use it to further his kingdom. Next Sunday, 10 o'clock, together for New Year's Eve, we'll be taking Lord's Supper together, so don't miss out on that. Bring some people with you, but right now, man, make sure you hug on some people's necks. You tell some people Merry Christmas as we dismiss out of this place. Thank you so much for being here today. You are dismissed.